Okay, so I'm here with Edmund. Edmund, that's a fantastic shirt. I want to give a shout out to uh, Tiffany and RJ and everybody in the Books of Four family. Um, so he's representing today. Um, would you introduce yourself to our guests? <clears throat> uh, yes, uh, my name is Edmund Stone and uh, I'm a horror author. And as my bio says, part-time boat captain, which uh, I do a little bit of both. <laughs> I live right here on the <laughs> I river, so I've got plenty of uh, water in my backyard to uh, play around in. Um, nice. I have uh, currently, I always have to count them up, but um, five published novels. No, sorry, I'll get that wrong. Four published novels and uh, three uh, short story collections. Because uh, within is a short story collection. So, mm -hmm. um, and I have. Um, Today, you know, I mean, uh, right now I have uh, Tent Revival on the, um, that's my first, that was my first novel ever, and it's on the uh, Brawl Intention list uh, for books. Of nice. <clears throat> awesome. Um, so is this your first yeah, time I on have... the Intention list? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Didn't uh, interrupt. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, thank you. I remember uh, last year uh, uh, checking out all the, uh, you know, the back and forth and the, the, the excitement and everything about, oh, I'd love to be a part of that, you know. <laughs> So I've really you, been that out there. Yeah. Did you do your um, Smack Talk video yet or are you working on that? <laughs> I'm working on it. Um, <laughs> I had a, a conversation uh, and I did the, uh, everybody's kind of doing these top 10 uh, wish list kind of things or uh, that type of thing. And uh, yeah. <clears throat> I had a little bit of Smack Talk with Mike Salt. So who knows? There could be one coming. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Maybe you could slide in um, a little bit of the movie salt because that was kind of a, uh, ooh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen it, but there was a couple parts in there that might work in that I smack did. talking. Just a little advice. Just a little advice. No <laughs> offense, Mike Salt. <laughs> um, so I, you're a part-time boat captain. Tell me a little bit about that because I feel like fishermen sometimes have the best story. So you've got to have some kind of, <clears> I don't know, <throat> You've got to have some kind of DNA in you that says, I, I need the salt of the air, and I also need to have storytelling ability. So tell me a little bit about that. Well, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I've, I have a lot of fish stories, especially uh, mostly the ones that got away, because I really am not a very good fisherman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a recreational boater, but I do like to catch fish. So uh, occasionally, mm -hmm. uh, got some pretty decent sized ones out here. Um, not far from here probably i'm pointing this way because the river's right out there but mm -hmm. um in that direction uh, just a few feet from where i live there was a 77 pound catfish caught and oh, wow. uh, it, was, it was so big that the guy put his hand and he's a big guy too he put his hand all the way up to his elbow inside his mouth that's how big that fish was <laughs> wow wow yeah, those annoying. things are powerful too like they oh, suck up hard. down into the mud with them i think <laughs> I've got small ones that will, uh, oh my gosh, they'll just yeah. fight. Like, they'll, they I mean, that's barbed. like sticking your mouth in a pit bull, literally. Yeah. It's like, Basically. you know, and then trying to fight that thing out of the water. That's that's crazy. So do you do like um, night boating and kind of tell some ghost stories? Like, I have done that. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's it, it, well, what's interesting is when you're out there at night and, you know, it's really quiet. And then my wife usually goes with me. We just hang out there and watch the stars for a little while until we come in. Uh -huh. He's sitting there and uh, all of a sudden you'll hear waves behind you. And you're like, what in the world? And you turn around oh. and there's a boat. And I mean, like these barges, they're enormous. They come right up Holy on top. Cow. You don't even see them until they're like just a couple feet from you, maybe five feet. At the, you know, it looks like they're right on top of you, but it's probably about five, yeah. six. But um, it's a little, it's a little intimidating when you see like that coming up on you really quick. I bet, you know, yeah. Uh, like the loud splashes, like really big noises and stuff. And I always like to think it's just some kind of a vicious mermaid or something coming after me. But it's probably just one of those catfish I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's, as long as it's not an alligator, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alec now, I have seen uh, what they call alligator gar, which has these big teeth about that long. But other than that, I haven't seen anything <laughs> like an alligator floating around. That's probably think, a good thing. Yeah. I don't think they yeah. will live long. Water is kind of <laughs> too cold. <laughs> um, so tell me a little bit about um, your most recent book and what um, what inspired you to write that? And we get asked those questions all the time, but they really do love to hear what inspired this current story that you're writing. 
Now you're talking about the one uh, punished, right? The one that was off within, or are you um, talking about? I'm talking about the one you're working on right now. What I'm working on right now, Delilah. What are you working on right now? So, okay. do you, are you working on anything right now? If not, that's okay. We can go to the one right before that. But I, oh, no. I figure we're always working on something, right? So, Please. I want to know what you're working on right now. If it, if you can, if you can, and then tell me a little bit about what inspired that. Okay. Um, well, um, I, I mean, last year I wrote uh, within uh, a three part horror, um, all three stories. The the what inspired that one? They were all three about women and uh, women who are in uh, bad situations and they become empowered to overcome their adversaries and overcome their situation. <clears throat> um, mental health themes uh, floating around in there and things like that. What initially inspired that book was the very first story uh, I'd written a, a short story a long time ago and uh, put it out there, but it, it wasn't uh, really, uh, it was kind of, it was very amateurish and also before I was really a, a better writer, I thought. But anyway, mm -hmm. it, uh, that went out. And um, I took it, pulled it off, and said I'd, I always wanted to redo it and make it better. So I did. I made yeah. it a much, has a great twist at the end and all kinds of cool stuff. It's your uh, kind of your uh, slasher, uh, hacker, um, uh, hatchet yielding uh, kind of thing. <clears throat> um, but that one, when I, I pulled that up, I thought, you know, it needs more. I need another mm -hmm. one. I had a short story, uh, Hurt, that I'd sent out to a publication that got turned down. Um, I wasn't real sure until I looked at it, but I realized what the problem was with it. It was just too restricted on short on the word count. It was like, mm -hmm. uh, I think it was like 5,000 words. I expanded it to like almost 30,000, I think 25, 30,000 words. So it definitely needed that. <clears throat> right. Um, yeah, and it, and it turned out to be a really good. It turned out to be one of my best characters. Uh, Harper Lansing is the uh, mm -hmm. is the witch, and her powers are she uh, she can like any kind of punishment, a cut, a wound, a, a bullet, anything. She can turn that around and and put it and transfer it on the other person that that uh, oh, tries okay. to. Oh, okay. So she turned out to be a pretty good character, and a lot of a lot of good blood on that one. <laughs> so, yeah, um, for sure. Yeah, and so um, <clears throat> with her, uh, then I went into uh, another character, which uh, was by the name of uh, Katie Sanchez, and uh, that was in the story in the book called The Devil's Concubine, and mm -hmm. she is uh, like a, I, I used uh, inspiration from New Orleans, I love New Orleans, I've been there a few times, and one of my favorite mm -hmm. cities in the world, um, and I, I went there, and I had a lot of inspiration from that, so I taught, I said, you know, I always wanted to do a story about uh, you know, something mm -hmm. based in New Orleans. So, that kind of came from that one. And uh, it, it all just kind of started spiraling out and the voodoo got involved in it. Um, a, a magic machete that she uses uh, called uh, Delilah. And so oh, nice. that turned into, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. A lot of people like that, especially my uh, the people who like more extreme type stuff. They really love that yeah. one. That was the home there. <clears throat> um, then after I got all that done and I put within out, got a lot of uh, good reviews. It's, it's, um, it was my best-selling book. Now, Tent Revival is my best-selling book, but okay. it was book for a little while there. Um, and um, I decided, you know, everybody kept asking me, you know, I want more. It's like, you know, I see these stories and all the reviews were like, it just seems like there needs to be more. So I was like, well, of course, yeah, I got I got to do more. Um, right. So that's, yeah. So that got me thinking, you know, I could do sequels off of those stories. Um, yeah. So I did well off of Hurt uh, called Punish. And mm -hmm. uh, the story of Harper Lansing. Well, Harper goes through a lot of changes in that one. Um, she leaves, basically leaves society and uh, kind of goes off on her own. No internet, anything, just tries to hide. And mm -hmm. But she hides forever. Her past catches up with her. And so now she must confront that past that caught up with her. And uh, it ends up spiraling to a point to where she has to, fight a whole new battle and a whole new set of, uh, of evil people that uh, that rise up. Plus, she makes some good friends. Um, okay. The mental health themes uh, are really in there, too, because Harper has uh, borderline personality disorder. Mm -hmm. And uh, the girl she meets, Shelly, has, uh, um, I think I have put ADHD on her. And uh, the other one is more autistic, uh, the little girl that's in it. Um, okay. Th those Characters, yes. Those three characters uh, at the end of that book will show up again in the sequel to the third story mm -hmm. in the book, the, the Devil's Concubine. That story is called Delilah. Now that story releases April first, 
So um, uh, that one is the one I'm I'm doing the final uh, checks and stuff. So it should be out pretty much uh, on time. Um, ho- I'd love to have some for the copies of that for AuthorCon, but we'll see what happens. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but think- it's it's we're we're always struggling. The authors, you see a mad rush. It's like our tax time when AuthorCon comes up. <laughs> you see all the authors like rushing to finish projects and rushing to you know get their copies in and you know fighting with whoever amazon barnes and noble whatever we're always fighting with them so it's like our tax time i think um this and then of course around halloween it's like don't talk to me like i'm not a pleasant person right now i'm trying to <laughs> trying to get my life together <laughs> and I'm, you know, you know, like, i'll get like you know i checked the i said well i'll check facebook no no leave facebook alone just stay away yeah. you gotta get this done <laughs> Yeah. So um, one of the things that I, so I'm a mentor and one of the things I tell my authors, cause you know, Facebook is a time suck for us, right? But we've got to stay engaged to our readers and our fans. So one of the things that um, I've, I've given them as advice is to, um, you know, do uh, schedule posts, right? Schedule your post out for the week. Um, you can still engage, but then you can time yourself, right? Like give yourself an hour to check those posts to kind of check in. Um, or like if I'm writing that day, I'll give myself like 15 minutes that I can, you know, timer. I put a timer on because my I'll look up and it'll be two hours, right? So yeah. I put a timer on and just say, okay, you're going to write. And then when you're done with your blitz, right, then you're going to give yourself a timer and you can say, okay, I can check in with Facebook, whatever. It takes me about an hour now that I've kind of gotten used to it to schedule out my posts for the week. Um, and then when I check in, my time is more productive, right? My time is intentional when I go there. So my question for you is going to be, what do you do um, to balance trying to keep engagement with your readers, but also trying to go into that place that we need to go to as writers to get that that product finished, right? Or get that story done or get that idea out onto paper. What is your advice to another author who might be starting out going like, I don't know how to balance that? Well, um, the, one, the one thing I do is I make my writing time precious. And that is like, I get up super early. Gosh, I get up so early. I get up so early that like uh, by the time nine o'clock rolls around in the evening, I crash and I'm so tired so I mean I get up yeah around four and five that's usually when I get up around sometimes 4 30 is what I shoot for yeah but go in and I don't I don't pick up my phone I don't do anything I just leave it all alone walk straight in grab my coffee bring it in my thermos set it down start writing and then I just go right. for a couple hours sometimes more if I'm in a really good spot and I want to just keep on going but the main thing I've learned um is to make that writing time like golden. Do not let anything get around and make sure. Like it's your actual work. Like I'm at work, I'm, you know, in a meeting, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, um, but that that's the one thing I found that works the best for me. Um, I, I was, you know, and, I, and I, I was getting really bad about like coming in and uh, the first thing I do is check my phone, check my email. No, don't do it. Just leave it alone. Right. <laughs> because it'll right. be there. Right. It'll be there. <laughs> And yes. And I think what people don't understand about writers is that we will draw inspiration from anything. So if we just go to check on our Facebook, we're like, hmm, that's a great story. Or, oh, there's a open call and I can write another story. Or what? like we just get so caught up in that chasing the tail that it'll be like you said, like I said, two hours later. And I'm like, man, I have five words written down right now. So, yes, I, I totally agree with oh. you. You've got to stay focused. And it's a, you know, uh, another thing that um, I don't think, you know, our readers understand is when we're in that zone, like it is exhausting sometimes because you are creating this entire world and you're making sure that all those points are kind of lining up um, and staying like through a movie, right? But we're, our movies last eight hours if we're writing eight hours, Um, but it's intensive because you're directing at the same time. So um, when you are done for the day, how do you unwind? Uh, typically, um, I mean, I either read a book or watch some TV, one or the other. Uh, that's usually the way to it. Um, I, I try to, um, most nights I try to come home from, because I work a day job. So I try mm-hmm. to come home, from, uh, maybe do a little bit more, just check a few things. If like something came to me and I was like, oh, I need to check that out and just look that up. Yeah. Um really try not to do a whole lot of writing in the evening. Um, if I can do some marketing, I will, if I can, uh, but mm-hmm. typically I'm exhausted. So uh, if I yeah. do that, 
to do maybe a, a half hour, an hour of that, then go shut everything down, go in and just sit there and watch TV, you know, hang out with my wife for a little while. We just maybe cook dinner or whatever. But um, mm. then usually, like I said, you know, by nine o'clock, I'm so tired. I can't help myself. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I totally <laughs> understand. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to um, ask one more question and then I want you, once we're done, I would love for you to tell us where we can um, find some of your work, um, find you and where you're most active on. Cause again, you know, social media, kind of a distraction for us. So tell us where you're most active at, but what I really like to know right now is who you're reading. Oh, who I'm reading right now. Okay. Well, I'm reading this book. A good friend of mine. Oh, Name nice. Book. Good book. Uh, reading that, that is on my to be read. So let me yeah. know how you how you find that. <laughs> um, I have uh, with me, it's it's crazy. I have uh, I have a print book going. I have uh, a couple of e-books going and, a, and an audio book. So my audio book mm. uh, with Nikki's wreckage, it's on the uh, intention list. So I was uh, I've been reading it, just finished it. So I'll be leaving a review for that one. Uh, Jason's a good mm. buddy of mine went to uh, uh last convention in Huntington, uh, West Virginia, not far from here. So, um, uh -huh. but he, the uh, Biblio Beard books, I'm sure you've probably seen it around, but he's, he's a good writer and he's good. He's a good guy. So anyway, that got, I've been doing that one on the audio. Um, just finished, uh, uh, Gage Greenwood's new book. Um, uh, yes. Block, uh, on a clear day, you see Block Island. Just finished that one. Yes. Right there. Um, and uh, I'm also uh, reading uh, Ben Young's uh, new book. Um, it's um, it's called um, The Home is what it's called. So I'm reading it, too. And uh, that's an arc read. Uh, also, uh, I'll, uh, he's invited or asked me if uh, I would do the uh, introduction. Uh, uh, nice. To the book. Yeah. I said, yeah no. He also did it's an such an honor. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is a huge honor. Uh, but he also did an introduction for me on uh, Punish. So it's a Awesome. Yeah. It's, it's good great. to, I love being able to like return the favor for, you know, our community oh, yeah. because it's, it's such a hard community to kind of like just get traction. In. And, you know, when you find good people, you, you kind of stick with them. Right. So that's awesome. All right. So go ahead and show us your covers. I'd like to see what you've got for us today and then just go ahead and tell us where we can find you and sure. we'll wrap up for today. There's, this is the one that's on the intention list. Tent Revival. Nice. Mm -hmm. um this is the sequel or the well the second book in the series i should say the one beautiful and this is the third book in the series lost hope Very um, nice. those, and do you have the same um book cover artist for each one uh no uh this one here was done by a group called m-i-b-l-e m-i-b-l art i think is what they're called that one was oh. and uh who were the same uh, artists um they were done by francis francois valancourt originally he's and, awesome yes oh uh, he is and then uh, i changed up the colors a little bit i asked him if it's okay yeah. if i changed the color match a little more with this one and he said yeah right. that's fine um but uh ruth anna evans uh the uh, uh she does cover art and stuff she did the uh, touch-ups yes. for me um, and yeah, also, I know Ruthann, she's awesome too. You know, I was going to say, because they look so cohesive, like that was, that was pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Originally we did more of a, like a, more of like a blue background like this right here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, there, yeah, and, there you go. I was going to say, <laughs> and, and that was fine. I mean, they, these two looked like they, these two actually looked like they were books unto themselves. And right. but what was, was I kept noticing that this book got, it, where it has more of a gray and red it was it wasn't linking up to the fact that it was a series yeah so yeah a, a carver pike he, he recommended that i get get them all the same color they make it look right. better you know so that's what i did and uh but that i think they it turned looks out. good mm -hmm. they look and, very nice oh thank you thank you speaking of that there's this is within oh that's the one nice here um, this one uh, was a cover artist. Her name is Maisley Stokely, but I don't think she's doing it anymore. I think she's kind of gotten out of it. But Aww. I thought she did. I don't know really why she that's, that's a great art illustration. Yeah, I was going to say that's pretty good. Uh, and I'm going with the same theme. I want the same theme on the uh, like the uh, like people on this one. There's a person on this one. This is Punish, and that one was done by nice. Ruthann. Very nice. 
And then within or uh, Delilah, I'd have to pull up the ebook cover because it is um it's not out. Just yet, an ebook. So yeah. Pre-order. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Well, go ahead and tell us where we can find you and we'll go ahead and wrap up. And I look forward to seeing you on the draw. All righty. Uh, you can find me at uh, all pretty much uh, all my stuff is at edmundstoneauthor.com. Um, you can find my newsletter there to get a free story connected to Tent Revival called uh, Rebecca and Sage, a Tent Revival prequel. <clears throat> um, you That's where you sign up for a newsletter. You can, uh, there's a store link on there. I have a store. Uh, it's uh, edmundstoneauthor.bigcartel.com and then you can find all my signed books there. Currently, I think I have I have Tent Revival, uh, Punish, and Within, but I'm out of the other two. I'm getting stock built back up for those. But okay. um, yeah, and the, uh, I was going to tell you, the if you order um, Tent Revival now, it's on sale for $10 and you get in the U.S. Uh, only, but you get uh -huh. these little pretty uh, cards with it. Oh, nice. Oh, I love swag. Okay. Yes, show it all. <laughs> so anyway. so beautiful. Those, uh, you get a little cool sticker and a bookmark also comes with it. All signed. Nice. So, um, I'm all about signing. Yeah, the readers I, love the swag, so those are good. Those are good. <laughs> what, what is that? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick one more question in there because I, I, I think this is so important to you. Um, readers love swag too, right? And we're readers. Um, what is the, well, the, if you can remember right off the top of your head, can you remember what your most favorite swag is? that you've gotten as a reader oh okay hmm. let's see it's probably hanging in here uh this was kind of cool but this was this was a, a reader actually got this for me can you see it there the you pull it up a little bit there you go yes those are awesome i these love cool. those but miniatures are so big right now you probably need to get more of those because people love reader. them <laughs> they gifted that to me i thought that was pretty cool and this up here is awesome. Got that from uh, out of the uh, indie uh, winter indie horror yes. box. Well, it's got a little pouch in it and everything. I love leather that stuff. That was pretty like cool. It. That was great. The yeah. smell so, of it, right? <laughs> so uh, probably those are my two favorites that I have in here. Um, I think uh, I've got a few other things floating around. Oh wait, there's one. I gotta show you this. It's so cool. The toe tag. Yes. <laughs> love the toe tag. Out. Whose was your and sign by? I think I, I think it's uh, Keelan uh, Patrick Burke. I think it's oh, signed up. Yes, that's awesome. That's awesome. Kaylin's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Really. <laughs> so, anyway, but yeah, we're probably that's both a, pronouncing it wrong. <laughs> we probably. Uh, I don't have the right accent. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, is there any place else that you wanted to, or anything else you wanted to tell us before we um, go ahead and wrap it up? I mean, all my books are on Amazon. Uh, Tent Revival mm -hmm. here is uh, on sale for 99 cents on uh, Amazon. And it will be all the way through till uh, the intention, till the drawing, all that. Because I want everybody to read this book. Um, yes. Absolutely, absolutely love it. Uh, there, There is one other thing I did want to say. Um, sure. This year, in the, coming up in the summer, I'm going to have a spinoff to this book. Oh, um, okay. Had originally planned to only have Tent Revival in the whole Rebecca Mythos series, and I, that was where I was going to end it. it <clears throat> but um, the more interest that Tent Revival is getting now, I mean, everybody's reading it, loving it, they're asking a lot of things about it. Then it got to me thinking, you know, I could do a spinoff of that one, like kind of like a prequel. It's based yeah. on the, the there's a there's an abandoned mine in the, in the story, and. Uh -huh. What I want to do with that, with the story that's coming is I want it to be to, in the past when the mine was operational and everything was starting okay. to, and that's where I'm going with that one. Um, that's pretty, yeah, that sounds like it's a great um, spinoff to that because people love backstory and they kind of live in our own brain rent free, right? So we know everything that's going on. We know why it happened, but when the reader starts to get a little bit more involved, so here's, here's the trick guys, read readers, this is for you. Yeah. You need to make sure that Edmund knows that you want to hear more about this so that you can get him more motivated to write yes, this sir. book, this book, right? So if you if you have read The Tent Revival, I want you to go ahead and email or hit him up on social media and let him know you've read it. And yes, you want so 
the spinoff, right? <laughs> is, um, All right. Well, you can find me on the on especially like uh, Facebook. Uh, I'm always plugged mm-hmm. around book for my own site. I have my own uh, group called uh, Rebecca's Army, so you could heck, check that out okay. too. So lots of stuff going awesome. on there. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, everybody, this is Edmund Stone. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. I look forward to reading your book. Good luck in the brawl. And um, we will talk to you again soon, okay? Thank you. It's good talking to you. You're welcome. You too. All right. All right. Go ahead. Bye.